So yesterday we were still talking about finding oxidation numbers, oxidation states before we can do our redox reaction. So I'm going to practice these. So the rules were free elements are zero. If you have an ion that is composed of only one atom, its oxidation number is its charge. If you have a neutral compound, they all add up to zero. If you have an ion, they all add up to the charge. If you have a metal, it should be a positive number. Non-metals, you have the table and you have to kind of figure them out. This comes back to haunt you in 180. So, all right, we, the last one we did was CO2. So let's do this one. Let's do SO4 minus two. So, do we have any free elements? No. Do we have any monoatomic ions? No. This is a polyatomic ion. All right. Do we have any metals? No. Sulfur and oxygen are nonmetals. So we got to be. We got to go by the tables. Our total number of charges here of our oxidation numbers needs to add up to what number? Negative two. So we know that S plus four times whatever the oxygen is equals negative two. So we know that. This is an S, not a five. So if you look on your table, for our non-metals on the table. We don't have fluorine. We don't have hydrogen. We do have an oxygen. And oxygen is negative two. So now we can plug that in for oxygen. So this is sulfur, this is an S, not a five, plus four times negative two equals negative two. So S, What's four times negative two? Negative. negative eight equals negative two. So the charge on sulfur is positive six. All right, let's try another one. Let's do NO3 minus one. So this is nitrate. Same thing. You go through the rules. And the first one on the table you get to is oxygen and oxygen is negative two. So let's set up our little equation. So we know that nitrogen plus three times however many oxygens we have equals, what is it equal to? What's the total charge? Negative. negative one, good. Equals negative one. So nitrogen, three times negative two is negative six. So what does that make nitrogen? Add six to both sides, you get positive five. Nitrogen is positive five. Okay. Two more. This one's going to be more complicated. K2, Cr2, O7. All right, so we got to look at our rules. Do we have any free elements? No. no, we do not. Okay. Do we have any single ions? No. 
All right, do we have a neutral compound? Yes, so everything adds up to what? Zero. So everything's gonna add up to zero, so we know that. Do we have any metals? Yes, we do. Can we put a charge on which one? Potassium. So we know potassium is gonna be plus one according to the periodic table. Chromium could be several things. We don't know it just yet. And then for, but we know it's probably gonna be positive, positive something. So, and we know oxygen according to the table is what? Negative two. Negative two. All right, good. So we gotta figure out what chromium is. So we can set up our expression. We have two potassiums, so two times plus one. And we know that two times whatever chromium is, plus seven oxygens times negative two, all adds up to how much? Zero, very good. You can do this, it's just weird. Okay, so we know that two plus two times chromium minus 14 equals zero. So I'm gonna bring things over to one side. So I'm gonna get two chromiums equals how much? 12. So that means chromium is positive six. So chromium is positive six. Okay, last one of these we're gonna do, then we're gonna do some reactions. We're not gonna do all these reactions, it's not really necessary. All right, is, let's do um, Na2O2. Okay, do we have any free elements? No, do we have any single ions? No, is this a neutral compound? Yes. Everything adds up to zero. All right, do we have any metals? Yes, sodium. What is sodium's charge? Plus one. All right. So let's see what oxygen needs to be. So we have two sodiums. So we have plus two minus or plus whatever, plus two times oxygen equals zero. I'm putting OX for oxygen because my O's and zeros look similar and I don't want you to get confused. So you know that two times oxygen is negative two. So what's oxygen's charge here? Negative one. So that's why non-metals, you do those last. So we had to do the metal first, because if we had said, oh, oxygen's negative two, sodium can't possibly be positive two. Not gonna happen. Now, that we can assign oxidation numbers, we need to do things in a reaction. Okay, because oxidation and reduction aren't confusing enough. Remember, oil rig, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Now, atoms that lose electrons are being, oxidation is lost, so they are being oxidized. So somebody thought it would be a great idea so let's also call them reducing agents because that's not confusing at all. The converse is also true. Atoms that gain electrons are being reduced. So let's call them oxidizing agents. Not my idea. I don't like redox very much. But I learned to do it. You can do it too. So I'm going to show you how to set these up. 
all we're going to be doing, we're not going to, we're not going to do any balancing. We're not going to do any reactions with them. We're just going to look at oxidation numbers, determine what's happening, what's changing and identify it. That's the extent of the, what this chapter is covering as far as redox is concerned. So when you get an equation, usually questions will say, is this a redox reaction? Well, we don't know yet. In order to determine if it's a redox reaction, we have to determine if electrons are actually being transferred. So let's put some oxidation numbers on this. So carbon has an oxidation number of what? It's a free element. Free elements are zero. Sulfur is also a free element. It is also zero. Okay, that makes things easy. So let's look over here. Going down the table, you get to sulfur first. Sulfur would be, according to the table, minus two. So what does that mean carbon has to be? Think charge balance. Four, positive four. Positive four. This is a compound. It has to add up to equal zero. Now, the next thing you do, draw arrows, and these are square arrows. Square arrows. My original teacher said they were shot by square Indians. That's probably not politically appropriate now, so I tend not to include that in my lecture, but if it helps you remember it, Okay, so draw from the numbers that change. Now, I'm only gonna work on one of these at a time because otherwise I get confused. So carbon goes from zero to positive four. Did it gain or lose electrons? Lost electrons. So you say loss of four electrons. When you lose electrons, is that oxidation or reduction? Oxidation. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So oxidation. Then go ahead and say, if this is oxidation, carbon is the reducing agent. Do it all at once before you get confused. Is confusing enough. Then you go down to your next one. Sulfur is going from zero to negative two. Is it gaining or losing? Gaining. So it is gaining two electrons. Gaining two electrons means Oxidation or reduction? Reduction. reduction. Good. You can, in, you can use deductive reasoning for this as well, but say you choose whichever one you choose to start with. So reduction is gain. It's called reduction because it goes from zero to negative two. So the number is being reduced in value. It's becoming more negative. I don't like that notation, but that's why somebody decided that should be reduction. I have no good reason why they call it oxidation, other than I just had to learn it. So if, if this is reduction, that makes it the oxidizing agent. Isn't that weird? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're not going to do, we're not going to, this, this is as far as we are going to go. Usually most test questions will be, um, at this level will be something, is this a redox reaction? Yes or no? What is the oxidation number of such and such? What is the reducing agent? Uh, yes. Yeah. But it would, yeah, I would just say, is it, re is it redox? Yes, this is a redox reaction. 
things are changing. Is this oxid? Is there a lot of times they like to ask you what are the oxidation and, re and reducing agents? So in order for me to not get confused, I have to figure. I have to do all that. But do learn it at some point. Okay, let's do this next one. Again, we're we don't, we're not going to go through all of these. You can if you want to, but all right. So we have. Sodium and chlorine. Let's assign some numbers. Sodium here is zero. It's a free element. Very good. Chlorine is also a free element. It is zero. Look, it gave us sodium and chloride, so that's plus one and minus one. That makes it easier. Draw some arrows. It doesn't matter which is on top and which is on bottom. I don't really care, but I usually go top first. and then bottom. So if we're dealing with sodium, sodium goes from zero to plus one. Is it gaining or losing? Losing, good. Loss of uh, one electron. So if it loses, is it oxidation or reduction? Oxidation is loss which makes it also the reducing agent. Chlorine goes from zero to negative one. Is it gaining or losing? Gaining. It gains one electron. When you gain electrons, that is reduction, which makes it the oxidizing agent. Somebody thought this was a great idea. I don't like them very much. Do you know why it's backwards? No. Huh. No. Somebody thought it was a great idea and then they got a Nobel Prize, so we're all stuck with it. Is basically all I got. I mean, like, truly. All right. Since I'm running out of space, let's go and let's do this one next. Oh, were y'all working ahead of me? Good for you. Good. All right. Uh, lithium is zero, fluorine is zero, lithium plus one. Minus one. So see, I told you it gets easier when you do it. Draw the arrows first. You're, you're getting these numbers according to the rules. So the rules say free elements are zero. Uh, if you have a monoatomic ion, it's its charge. If you have a neutral compound, it's zero. If you have an ion, it adds up to the charge. Metals are positive. Non-metals are assigned by the table. And then you have to figure the rest of them out. All right, so with lithium, zero to plus one, gain or loss? Loss. Loss, loss of one, good. Loss is oxidation oxidation if it's oxidation what agent is it the reducing agent fluorine goes from zero to minus one what's it doing gaining gaining one electron when it gains we call that reduction so what kind of agent is it oxidizing okay let's go down here and let's do this one because there's here we don't start with all three elements that's when that's when things get kind of fun okay so what is aluminum here zero, zero. 
All right. How about in this one? Iron can have more than one possibility, so we don't know exactly what it is. So let's go with oxygen. According to the table, oxygen is what? Negative two. Negative two. So if we have three of them, so here we can kind of go over here. Three times negative two plus two times iron equals how much? Zero, because it's neutral. So two irons equal six. So iron is plus three. Plus three. This is just a charge balance, so that's not so bad. It gets tough when you have to find the ones with the polyatomic ions in them. Like when, see, you'd be, you'd, be, you'd be glad I didn't make you do the sulfur one. You're welcome. All right, so here iron is zero. How do we find this one out? We start with which one? Oxygen's negative two. So aluminum is? plus three. Now let's look at what changed. Aluminum changes and iron changes. Note, oxygen does not change. We don't need to draw an arrow to it. Okay, I just like to start from the left. So on the top here, aluminum goes from zero to positive three. Gain or loss? Loss. Oxidation or reduction? Oxidation. What kind of agent is it? Reducing. Good. If you work them the same way, you're less likely to make errors. So iron goes from positive three to zero. Gain or loss? Gain. Gain means it's reduction. If you're someone that says, oh, going from three to zero is a reduction in oxidation number, good for you. I'm not. If it's reduction, we call it the oxidizing agent.